Okay, maybe we'll get we'll get started here. Um, and um, yeah, uh, Peter, yeah, you, the, there will be um, the this this is being recorded. This uh, presentation and the webinar, um, and uh, we'll post the the recording on the um, engage uh, engage Whitehorse TMP uh, webpage. So um, it will be available there. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone for for joining. Um, welcome. Um, today uh, we're uh, talking about the transportation master plan um, and some of the work that's been done on it. Um, this project's been in, in uh, progress for a few years now uh, in the city of Whitehorse. Uh, my name is Matthias. Um, I'm a, a consultant. Uh, sorry, I'm just figuring out how to. Yeah. Um, with working for the city on the engagement portion of this project and I'll be uh, your host and your guide and uh, we'll be hearing from from uh, from Stanley from Morrison Hirschfield and uh, Taylor Ash Peter as well um, but before we uh, get going here um, yeah just uh, a few housekeeping things uh, we have the chat so if you have questions as we go along um, type them in and we can we can answer them um, as we go along um, um, and I think your camera and your microphone are turned off automatically, so you, you are restricted to the chat. So if we'll we'll um, we'll go through and uh, and answer the questions that you type in there um, on on the content of the uh, of the presentation, um, and. Uh, yeah, everything will be recorded and then put on the uh, the uh, Engage White Horse website. So for today, we'll uh, go over the the, the project. Um, we'll uh, talk about the staff, um, the work that's been completed, and the current status of the transportation master plan. Um, an overview of the engagement we've done so far on this project, uh, developing the uh, draft master plan and um, strategies and actions. So, so what the, the core of this plan is gonna look like. Um, and uh, we can hear some of your feedback uh, on that as we go along. And then the next steps for the planning process as well. So um, the project team, uh, yeah, like I said, my name is Matias. I'm a planner with Three Picas. Uh, Simon Lapointe uh, is the, uh, the lead planner on this project on the engagement side of things. Morrison Hirschfield is uh, doing the um, transportation engineering on this project. Stanley Lee, um, who's here, is, a, is the lead. Uh, Andreas Bias, who's, who's not here tonight. Um, Stefan Baer is the lead from the city of Whitehorse. Um, he couldn't be here tonight. Um, however, uh, Taylor Ashpetter, uh, uh, from the, the manager of engineering services in the city is here uh, in his place uh, tonight. So essentially, the, the 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 transportation master plan it uh, sets a long term vision and a strategy for transportation over the next twenty years in, in the in the city, and uh, it'll guide how people move in the city, um, and uh, it sets out um, you know a vision for a city with diverse transportation op options. Um, it also uh, you know, building on the official community plan, it, it looks at a, how to establish a safe, equitable, and sustainable transportation network in the city uh, and improve on those goals. So, um, so far uh, on the, um, sorry, yeah, I'm just, uh, so, so at this point in the process, we're, uh, we're at the implementation uh, planning uh, and the, the financial uh, strategy. So we've uh, initiated the project, um, the collected uh, data, um, done an assessment of transportation network. Um, and the, so this is the last step before the final master plan. So there's been quite a bit of uh, engagement done already on this project. So um, We've had uh, the project webpage where we've had um, over 1,200 visitors, um, 180 survey submissions, uh, 100 open house attendees at the first open house, 
um, <clears throat> which we did um, back during the pandemic times and um, was one of the first open houses during uh, during that time. Um, and the key themes that we heard, uh, really it's, uh, we, we, people have a desire to see uh, increase uh, transportation options for all ages, abilities, incomes, and seasons. Um, people talked a lot about public safety uh, in the transportation network. Um, a focus on uh, you know the, the city's core transportation services like transit, uh, complete streets. So streets that uh, provide um, for all different modes. Um, so a motorized and non-motorized uh, transportation modes. And there's also an emphasis on climate action and sustainability, um, and you know recognizing the the link between um, how we move around the city um, and the implications on uh, on uh, energy use and climate uh, uh, action, um, climate change. Um, we heard a lot of specific feedback on the active transportation network, um, the transit network. Um, and the road network as well for drivers, um, road safety really being highlighted, um, and uh, those key areas where where improvements, uh, where people felt there there needed to be improvements to the network. So um, I'll turn things over to you now, Taylor, to talk about how the plan was developed um, and the implementation plan. I think you're muted. Thanks, Mateus. I recognize that people will be very interested in the projects that uh, that will be proposed as part of this transportation master plan. And uh, we're excited for that too. So I wanna go over some details and how we, we developed those projects and, and the important implementation plan. Okay, um, next slide, please. So as part of developing the, the draft implement, implementation plan, there's three uh, core steps. Uh, we took into consideration uh, the vision, values, goals, desires, and priorities. Some details on these, um, some of the, the plans and policies or our regional plans and policies. Um, of course, our, our recently adopted official community plan uh, had elements of uh, transportation uh, associated with it, our sustainability plan, our council priorities, uh, phase one of the transportation master plan engagement um, helped inform our, our, um, our implementation plan, and of course, feedback from external governments and interested parties and the public. I'll just go over in uh, a bit more detail, some of the, the overarching uh, goals out of the uh, OCP related to transportation. But just a second. Um, Am I one ahead? Yeah, uh, there, there you go. go. Thanks for taking right. uh, So from the OCP, um, it identified a network that's accessible, safe, equitable, and sustainable. Um, a network that promotes active and shared transportation. Uh, there's a desire to maintain and design for uh, year-round multimodal. Uh, working towards zero traffic fatalities and serious injuries. Uh, to minimize uh, need for daily personal vehicle use. And an active transportation network that's complete and connected for all ages and abilities. So um, looking at the, uh, the second um, component of the uh, implementation plan is the capacity and constraints. It, it's important to, to realize we have, we have a finite amount of funding and resources to implement uh, transportation projects. Um, we, we can't improve or rebuild our transportation network overnight. And, and because of that, we, you know, we, we need to really prioritize projects. 
Um, so as part of this implementation plan, we are really striving for a realistic plan um, that, that can be implemented and, and takes into consider these major constraints that are listed, such as funding, um, other competing priorities, or other components of our, uh, our assets in the city, like water and waste infrastructure. Um, our, our city staff, we have a finite amount of resources, the consulting industry, and then of course the contracting industry as well. I'll turn it over to Stanley here for the next next slide. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, the last key item that we need to consider uh, when developing the draft implementation plan is to address the existing and the future potential issues and opportunities. So this slide listed the existing and the future issues and opportunities for the city. Uh, the transportation related ones include population growth, environmental protection, traffic management, operations and maintenance, equity, transportation equity, active transportation, traffic safety, accessibility, public transit, new mobility, and uh, transportation demand management. There are a lot of things to cover, but uh, we'll talk a little bit about the key items, including the transportation modeling, road safety and active transportation. So this slide shows you uh, uh, our model uh, for, the trans for the 2040 horizon year. Um, transportation modeling is a valuable tool used in the transportation master planning exercise to understand and analyze the transportation system. Uh, based on the land use plans, transportation modeling helps to uh, forecast transportation demand, designing the uh, transportation infrastructure, infrastructure, including roads, highways, and the public transit, planning traffic management strategies, assessing uh, environmental impacts, and evaluating policies. Uh, Morris Hirschfield developed the existing model based on the existing traffic counts uh, between uh, from 2017 to 2022, uh, existing roadway network and uh, the uh, citywide 2040 land use plans to project the 2040 horizon year traffic condition. Uh, so as you can see, there are, there are multiple corridors that will be experiencing high co congestion levels, including Mountain View uh, Drive, Quartz Road and Copper Road Corridor. Alaska Highway Corridor and the Tuma Hill Road Corridor. Next slide, please. So we also look at, looked at the collision data to identify the pot potential locations uh, with uh, transportation safety hazards. As the city is embracing the Vision Zero policy for transportation safety, it is crucial to ensure that uh, every transportation infra infrastructure is safe for all roadway users, not only drivers, but also pedestrians, cyclists, transit riders, and other new mobility users. As shown on this map, uh, the collision heat map, the locations with high collision history and the potential uh, includes crossings along 2nd Avenue, uh, 4th Avenue between Industrial Road and Ogilvy Street, to My Hill Road and Alaska Highway intersection, and uh, to my hill road and uh, range road intersection. Next slide, please. Active transportation is another piece that uh, will help reaching our most shared targets and the climate change ambitions. Therefore, it is also very important to understand where the active transportation demands are. Um, now we understand that uh, uh, the transportation system and the resources we have we will need to move on to the strategies and action plans uh, based on the visions, uh, the constraints and the issues and opportunities that we just discussed. Uh, I'll pass the back to Taylor to uh, first talk about the strategies and the key TMP goals for developing the action plans. 
Great. Thanks, Stanley. As Stanley mentioned there, it, it, it was uh, important for us to take a strategic approach to planning our transportation network. Um, this is a, a bit of a, a vision, strategies, and actions pyramid. Um, at the top of the pyramid here, some of our, our higher arching uh, vision um, visions were informed by the official community plan, regional plans, as mentioned before, uh, feedback from interested parties and stakeholders, and of course, from the public feedback from the phase one engagement. Um, some of our strategies, as we're getting into a bit more detail here, um, increasing transportation options for all ages and abilities, incomes and seasons. That's the, the five A's. Uh, improved traffic safety, focus on core transportation services, um, work towards more complete streets using the complete streets concept, uh, climate action and sustainability, and promote equity and accessibility. And then, and then from those strategies and, and our analysis, analysis we're, we're coming up with some actions that we can take um, through the, the TMP. And some of those are policy and regulation related, um, safety, maintenance, and operational, um, improving the active transportation network, improving transit, uh, looking at more detail at intersections and crossings, um, and partnering, uh, looking at partnerships and, and advocacy. Uh, I, think, I think I've already gone through these. Mateus, we'll just skip on to the, the next slide. Some of the, the key goals out of our, our transportation master plan is we're, we're looking to develop a complete streets policy or, or proposing that that would be a way to meet some of these, our objectives and update design and maintenance standards. Work towards a minimum level of, or level of service rating of E for all intersections during peak traffic hours. By 2040, work towards 40% of all trips taken by a shared or sustainable mode of transportation. Uh, develop a complete connected and maintained 5A active transportation network to connect all neighborhoods and schools. Work towards vision or zero traffic related injuries or serious injuries and fatalities on city streets and identify opportunities to implement transportation demand management measures. I'll let uh, Stanley will get into some more detail on, uh, on some of these actions. Thank you, Taylor. <clears throat> Thank you, Taylor. Uh, so through the following slides, we'll talk about the, the details of the key items of action plans. We have a lot of things to cover. Um, and we want your feedback as we go through the key items, uh, especially the ones for active transportation, transit, and major capital projects. Please let us know your thoughts and comments. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to uh, provide your comments today, that's okay too, uh, because our online survey number two has been launched today. Uh, so please, please feel free to provide your comments there. Next slide, please. Um, as Taylor mentioned, uh, these are the focus areas of the uh, action plan, uh, including the transportation policy and the regulation, safety, maintenance, operations, active transportation, transit, intersections and crossings, parking, uh, major projects, and the partnerships and advocacy. Next slide, please. Um, so when we design and prioritize the items under each focus area, we always keep a user experience in mind. Uh, it's the user experience not only for automobiles, uh, for drivers, but also for other transportation modes, including pedestrians, cyclists, and the tra transit riders. Uh, the user experience we talk about include convenience, comfort, reliability, safety, accessibility, affordability, sustainability, and inter integration and intermodality. Next slide, please. Um, 
as different transportation modes would require different level of resources to reach the same level of user experience, we will need to balance the re resources allocated to each travel mode to ensure that uh, equity of the transportation system. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the first uh, focus area, uh, which is the policy and the regulations. On the policy and regulations, uh, the key items include uh, to develop a complete streets policy and update the design and maintenance standards manual, to create a safe, accessible, and inclusive transportation network that accommodate need the needs for all roadway users from the design standard level. Uh, the second one is to develop a vision zero policy to further improve uh, road safety and reduce collision rates and the severity. Uh, to develop a neighborhood traffic calming policy to encourage safe driving and reduce traffic volumes on neighbor neighborhood streets. Uh, develop an on-street parking policy to improve parking regulations and the parking experience. Develop a transportation demand management policy to encourage more ac active transportation and transit use and reduce the number of private vehicle trips. Develop a new mobility policy to enable seamless and efficient mobility for goods and uh, for goods and people. And also conduct a comprehensive transportation bylaw policy review. Those policy and bylaws include uh, city speed limit review, recreational um, motorized use on the city's transportation network, parking regulations and uh, roadway maintenance regulations. Uh, and the last one is the project uh, management policy uh, to refine transportation project procedures and influence their outcomes from many aspects, including planning, budgeting, scheduling, risk management, public and stakeholder engagement, um, quality control, and the monitoring. Next slide, please. The second key uh, focus area is the safety, maintenance, and operations. Uh, some of the items under this uh, includes to review and update the signal timing plans uh, of signalizing sections every three years, uh, to improve pedestrian cyclist safety through uh, different initiatives, for example, the, uh, the lead pedestrian interval and uh, lead bicycle interval initiative. Um, Traffic signal highway upgrades, including bike push buttons, uh, detection systems, access, accessible pedestrian signals, upgrade uh, traffic signal detection system at uh, key, low, key intersections with known issues, um, further improve response time of emergency vehicles uh, and develop uh, emergency route mapping and signage, uh, develop an, an on-street electric vehicle charging network, to embrace the uh, emerging trend, uh, conduct a comprehensive inventory of the city's transportation infrastructure and assets, uh, and also to create uh, interactive maps to help residents familiarize with the city's uh, transportation network. Next slide, please. Uh, in the next few slides, we'll talk about the active transportation. Um, in order to evaluate the active transportation projects, uh, we developed a, a list of uh, uh, evaluation criteria or principles uh, for the projects, for active transportation projects. Um, those principles include uh, improved network connectivity, coverage, and uh, spacing, encourage more trips purpose for all ages and abilities, improve safety, Enhance cohesiveness of the network, support network effects, ease of implementation, enhance equity and uh, accessibility, and balance in expenditure. Next slide. I think uh, we can directly move to the next slide, the map. Yeah, so this map shows all the proposed bicycle and uh, pedestrian multi-use pathway network for the 2040 year horizon. Uh, those those groups of projects include Alaska Highway Active Transportation Improvements, Downtown Active Transportation Improvements, including both uh, East-West Corridors and North-South Corridors, Hamilton Boulevard uh, Separated bi bike Bicycle Pathway Project, uh, Hospital Area AT Projects, 
Riverdale neighborhood AT projects, Marwell area AT projects, Porter Creek neighborhood and the Pine Street area uh, AT projects, uh, Mountain View Drive, Copper Road, Quartz Corridor, and multi use pathway project, Robert Service Way uh, bicycle um, pathway project, Takini neighborhood active transportation improvements. Uh, and also the multi-use pathway system with uh, within the Whistle Bend neighborhood. Um, Range Rural North, the last one is uh, the Range Rural North multi-use pathway project. Uh, there are some pictures showing that uh, there are different uh, types of uh, active transportation projects that it, that is included in this map, including the uh, separated bike pathway project. Um, multi-use pathway project, buffered bi bikeway project, and also greenway uh, neighborhood greenway projects. Next slide, please. This slide shows you the uh, the transit key transit projects that's being proposed for this uh, TMP project. Uh, that includes the the peak hour transit service and the frequency improvements existing route alignment and the scheduling improvements to better match the, the transit demand, onboard technology improvements, handy bus program improvements, customer experience and branding, branding improvements, um, and the bus stop infrastructure improvements. Next slide, please. This map shows you the uh, transit service improvements uh, it, if, it, it will mainly focus on the connectivity and the user experience uh, amongst the major neighborhoods of the city. Those neighborhoods, including downtown, of course, um, north communities, including uh, Porter Creek and the Whistle Bend, uh, west community, including uh, McIntyre and the Copper Ridge, and the Riverdale on the other side of the uh, Yukon River. Uh, the map, the, the slide also gives us some examples of how the transit improvements could look like including the uh, heated and enclosed bus shelters, bus queue jump and the transit priority improvements and uh, bus exchange hubs. Next slide, please. Um, intersections and crossings are also important. We have a list of uh, long list of intersections and crossings uh, improvements, but we can only able to uh, list a few in this slide. Uh, for example, the citywide crosswalk improvements, including safe crossing in downtown along 2nd Avenue and the 4th Avenue, uh, and the crossings uh, near schools and other community attractions, uh, intersection improvements along Ham Hamilton Boulevard and the Mountain View Drive corridors, uh, intersection improvements along uh, Sentinel Street, 12th Avenue, uh, 15th Avenue, and the Alaska Highway. Um, and as well, as well as major intersection improvements, such as uh, Second Avenue and Fourth Avenue intersection. Next slide, please. So regarding parking, um, there are also some improvements, um, including the accessible parking stall upgrades, uh, adjust parking rates for uh, peak hours and off peak hours, adjust parking rates for parking passes, and also parking fines, um, improve parking related technologies. Those technologies include uh, new parking meters, mobile applications, handheld enforcement uh, devices, um, expand parking supplies for commuters, consider structured uh, public parking uh, in the downtown core, improve and coordinate parking signage, um, evaluate, integrate, and promote parking for car share programs. For example, for members of par car share co cooperatives and businesses, and also consider the parking implications and uh, the city's role relative to emerging trains, including EV ve uh, electrical vehicles, uh, autonomous vehicles, and the connected vehicles. Next slide, please. <laughs> So here comes the most important part of the action plan is the uh, road capital improvement projects. Uh, similar to the active transportation projects, we developed a list of principles to evaluate the, the different projects, uh, different capital projects. Those principles include uh, accommodate the uh, 
the movement of people and goods eff effectively and efficiently, support downtown vitality, support the city's climate action goals and minimize environmental impacts, encourage walking and cycling activity by creating a safe, well-connected network of walking and cycling facilities, enhance community connectivity and foster um, economic development, enhance equity of the transportation network and affordability. Um, this is the list of the projects. Uh, we went through six scenarios of the project combinations and those six scenarios were evaluated using the previously mentioned uh, principles. Um, these projects are for 2040 horizon year, um, and there will be also phasing plans developed for the interim horizon years in the TMP. Um, the first project is the Mountain View Drive, Copper Ridge, Quartz Road Corridor Widening Project. Uh, the widening is mainly focusing on the southbound direction from one lane to two lanes to mitigate the morning peak traffic congestion. The second project is the Mountain View Drive Copper Road Quartz Corridor uh, Transit Signal Priority Project that will include the transit queue jump lanes and the transit queue uh, priority signal to improve the transit, uh, transit level of service. The third one is the new pedestrian bridge crossing the Yukon River connecting downtown, hospital area, and the Riverdale Great Mountain Trail system. The fourth one is the new vehicular bridge crossing the Yukon River. However, the location is uh, still to be determined. The fifth one is the roadway improvements along 12th Avenue to improve traffic conditions and the connectivity between the communities in the north and the Alaska Highway. The sixth project is similar to the, 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 the fifth project, is the roadway improvements along Whistle Bend Way, one road to improve traffic conditions and the connectivity between the communities in the north and the Alaska Highway. Number eight is the Hamilton Boulevard to My Hill Road, Fourth Avenue Corridor Transit Infra infrastructure improvements. Uh, those uh, infrastructure, transit infrastructure improvements include the uh, transit queue jump lanes and the transit priority signal. The last one is the Second Avenue Complete Streets project to encourage active transportation activities, support downtown vitality, and the foster uh, economic development. The key improvements on the Second Avenue Complete Streets project. Uh, including to reduce the uh, vehicular travel uh, from four lanes to two lanes, dedicate the curb lane uh, to transit use only um, during peak hour, and uh, parking for vehicular parking during off-peak hours, and reallocate the, the residual space to sidewalks and the public space. So the previously mentioned uh, capital projects are uh, illustrated on this map. Uh, the corridor improvements are shown in red and the associated intersection improvements are circled in, in, in green. The picture also shows some ideas of how the roads, roadway improvements could look like. Uh, for example, uh, the bottom left, shows you the cross section of the second avenue uh, with two vehicle or travel lanes and the two curb lane curb bus lanes and the all parking lanes and the wide sidewalks and public space on both sides um, the on the right side the bottom picture shows you a potential idea of the pedestrian uh, bridge crossing the yukon river uh, on the right side, top picture shows you how the Mountain View Drive could look like with uh, two southbound lanes and one northbound lane, as well as the multi-use pathway on the, um, on the east side. Uh, the left middle lane, uh, that's uh, just an idea of how we can expand the capacity 
especially the left turn capacity at the Alaska Highway and uh, um, Two Mile Hill intersection. And on the left side uh, top uh, is an is a example of how the 12th Avenue could look like. Next slide, please. So the last focus area is the uh, partnerships um, and advocacy. Uh, there are a lot of projects and a lot of uh, initiatives that can be done for the city, but uh, we know that the partner partnering with other government entities is also important in order to achieve all those uh, all those projects. Um, that those partnerships could include uh, improving traffic legislation and addressing road safety concerns through Motor Vehicle Act with Yukon legislation, improving school travel and school transportation planning with Yukon Department of Education, and also uh, Alaska Highway Management, traffic management with Yukon government. Next slide, please. Uh, now I turn back to uh, Matthias to talk about next steps. Thanks, Stanley. Thanks, Taylor. Um, a few next steps here um, on the engagement side of things. Um, what we're going to do a Q and A uh, um, just after I finish talking. Um, so you can you can um, type in your questions, and we have Stanley and Taylor and me to to answer those. Um, but in terms of the engagement, um, the survey number two is available uh, on uh, engage uh, the engage white white horse uh, platform um, yeah, that just launched a couple hours ago. Um, the uh, open house at, uh, for where we'll be outlining all of the the uh, the content that we've been talking about tonight, um, and Stanley will be there, and I'll be there, um, and Stefan um, is on the 14th at the Kwanlandan Cultural Center um, from 3:30 uh, to 6:30. Um, so look forward to seeing you there, um, and um, yeah, we'll have we'll have more updates uh, on the. Uh, engagewhitehorse.ca, uh, including the, the phase two, um, what we heard document. Um, so um, with that, we'll, we'll wrap up the presentation part of the, of the night. Um, thanks very much for attending and, uh, and uh, thanks um, for your questions. I don't see any open right now in the Q&A, but hopefully uh, you've been thinking of a couple and uh, you can type them in and then I'll, I'll kind of, uh, Act as the facilitator here, and uh, and make sure um, we we get a, an answer to you. Okay, Richard has asked. Um, BC government Ministry of Transportation has a guide for design of active transportation infrastructure. Um, what does Whitehorse use to design active transportation infrastructure? Uh, Taylor, do you want to start with that one? Yeah, you bet. Um, thanks, Richard. Yeah, we're, we're definitely aware of that uh, that guideline. Um, we also draw on uh, Transportation Association of Canada uh, guidelines um, for, for all of our, our active transportation infrastructure uh, projects. Stanley, do you have anything to build on that in terms of the does the does the plan speak to different standards or guides that are going to be used? Yeah, so uh, for active transportation, we we do recommend to use not only the BC ones, also the TAC uh, active transportation guideline for White Horse. TAC, TAC stands for. Uh, Transportation Association of Canada. Brenda, I see that you have some questions. Uh, do you want to type one in, and we can we can field it? Ah, uh, yes. Um, Taylor, do you want to answer when the the draft? Uh, document will be available in the maps. Well, okay, I don't uh, don't actually have the schedule in front of me. Um, uh, I can take on that one. Thanks. 
Yeah, so uh, the, the draft document will be available in October. Um, and map, map, you, 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 will be, you will be able to see some of the maps at the open house next week. Um, so please feel free to attend the open house next week. Yeah, and, and to your question there, we'll we'll make sure we um, we post the PDF uh, of the presentation uh, on the Engage website, so it'll, it'll be on there under the documents. Are there any other questions uh, that from, from the our participants tonight? Uh, I do see Brenda has a question about whistle bend. Oh, oh, it's right down. Sorry, I I missed the scroll. So. So Richard, have the, or I'll go with, with Brenda's first here. Um, why is my small residential street in Whistle Bend become the main artery for all traffic to phases five, six, et cetera, while there is a large artery nearby? Um, and there's some traffic issues um, on average 1,041 cars daily. Um, I, I'll, I'll take that one. Hey, yeah. Brenda, thanks for the, the notes. Uh, we, we've been, We've been in contact um, outside of the transportation master plan on this one, and 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 this would fall, Brenda. This um, the transportation plan is more macro. It's it's looking at the whole network, and and this is a very isolated uh, location that we can we can address administratively. Great, thanks, Taylor, and thanks for your question, Brenda. Uh, Richard's asked here, um, uh, is what, what was considered um, to gauge uh, active transportation demand? Um, and he's asking, is that, was the Strava heat map the only source of data that was used? Uh, I, can, I can take on this one. Uh, so we all, besides the Strava heat map, we also used uh, uh, the pedestrian and uh, bicycle counts from from uh, traffic counts uh, from different years. Um, it's uh, again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it, it's from uh, 2017 to 2022. Uh, we purposely avoid to use the counts um, in 2020 and 2021 because of COVID. But uh, we, yeah, besides Strava heat map, we do use uh, other sources for active transportation as well. I think today I was counted while I was biking in to work. <laughs> I think it's the active transportation week, uh, there's a there's a crew counting. Um, not to do with this planning study or anything, but I did see that. Um, I'm not sure if I am able to address Brenda's concern. Um, oh, on the design of Whistlebend, yeah. So, so, so uh, yeah, I can I can talk a bit more about the question. I'm I'm not too sure which uh, neighborhood street um, Brenda is talking about, but the design is uh, regarding the design as 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 we show in the in the map previously, in order to improve the connectivity between Whistlebend, Potter Creek, and uh, uh, Alaska Highway, uh, one road, and the 12th Avenue are dedicated as the artillery road for in the future. Um, Richard asks um, or, or commented that the, the active transportation counts are based on um, the existing infrastructure that maybe isn't uh, um, as good and uh, maybe doesn't reflect um, the actual demand for active transportation. Um, Stanley, can you talk a little bit about how active transportation uh, was considered in terms of the future and the vision for that that's going to be articulated in the plan? Yeah, so uh, in including, like, we, we do include the demand, active transportation demand as one of the criteria, you can call it criteria, or 
evaluation evaluation criteria or principle. But other than that, we also look at the map, uh, and and on the on the macro level um, to like to make sure that the connectivity coverage and spacing of the network is 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 covered. Um, and uh, we also need to make sure that uh, the trip purposes uh, for all ages and abilities uh, are there. Um, we also need to improve safety um, and uh, and to make sure that the implementation is the, you know the, the ease of implementation is also important. Um, and we also have to balance expenditure uh, and uh, and um, you know, one one of the big thing is to to make sure that equity, transportation equity is there. So, so when we develop the plan, it's not purely based on the the counts. Uh, it's also based on many other things. Counts is just one of them. So, so I would say that uh, you know counts based on the existing infrastructure. Yes, it's uh, it does not reflect the 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 future demand, but uh, but. Uh, uh, it's only one small portion of the evaluation. Taylor, do you have anything to add on that? Just no. Uh, Stanley nailed it there. Thank you. Great. Seeing another question. Um, so, um, maybe Stanley, can you, can you speak a little bit about, um, the different types of, of, uh, active transportation, um, paths that are being proposed in the plan, um, and where they're going to be located? Um, the question from Richard is about, uh, placement of painted bicycle lanes uh, on on uh, on roads and the, and the the safety of that um, and uh, there just wants to I think I think Richard's looking for some clarification on that. Right, as I mentioned, uh, there are different types of uh, active transportation improvements. Uh, painted bicycle lanes is one of them. Uh, we are, we're trying our best to avoid the painted bicycle lanes on you know high speed corridors so high speed corridors it's often either um, protected bicycle lanes which means there there will be at least a, a concrete barrier in between the bicycle lane and uh, traveling vehicle traveling or uh, we propose a multi use pathway uh, separate from the roadway so um I'm not sure which uh, which one which road you're talking about, but uh, if 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 it's okay, please uh, go to our survey and uh, type your comments there, and then maybe list uh, the, the 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 roadways that you noticed that uh, that we proposed the painted bicycle lanes on fifty kilometers road roads. Um, Falcon Drive. Uh, Peter has. Uh, well, let's go to the Peter first here. So, what um, will the TMP uh, address the interaction on paved paths, which makes walkers feel unsafe, and at times, uh, bikes, um, you know, the same way bikes feel unsafe on on streets. Um, so, how how does the plan uh, look at that interaction? I think it's about pedestrians and cyclists on the same paths. Yeah, so in terms of that, uh, <clears throat> um, on multi-use pathways, yes, there will be pedestrians, bicycles, and uh, you know, new mobility uh, modes on, on the same path. Uh, one thing that we can do is to provide a speed limit on these, uh, these uh, multi-use pathways. Which is under thirty or twenty kilometers per hour. Could I just add to that a bit? Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. Just uh, yeah, Peter. Just definitely recognize that there are a few multi-use paths in the city, 
uh, typically closer to downtown where we are seeing uh, the volumes of pedestrians and cyclists at the point where um, you know, there is some friction there at certain times of day. Um, and uh, we, we do have, correct me if I'm wrong, Stanley, one of the um, actions is to look at uh, repurposing the, the railway there. And that would, that would separate um, kind of your active commuter cyclists with, from, your, um, from the walkers that's on the riverfront trail and i'd say that's probably riverfront trail and at times millennium trail it's in my observations are definitely the two uh multi-use paths in the city that um are seeing those the volumes where there is uh there is some friction there i do remember uh yeah there's the uh white pass study that's proposed in the plan stanley can you can you confirm that yeah yeah uh that that study has been proposed but it doesn't mean that uh, uh you know yeah i guess i guess i would say that the uh, the decision will be uh, dependent on the uh, the solution of, from that study stanley do you Do you remember if uh, Falcon Drive had the painted lines or or a separated path? Uh, I can't recall, but uh, but uh, that question is very good. Um, so we will review the uh, uh, all the proposed active transportation corridors again, and to make sure that uh, every everything is uh, in the, uh, designed to be safe for all roadway users. Um, Richard asks about parking. Stanley, can you, can you elaborate a bit on what is being proposed in the plan regarding um, the supply of parking um, in, in, uh, in Whitehorse and if, if there's uh, just how it, how it outlines that, how it outlines that. Yeah. So supply of parking is is one of the idea um you know to make sure that uh, parking parking supply is sufficient in downtown uh but it doesn't mean that we will need uh, the parking demand the, the parking supply in downtown so it's just an idea listed there uh and uh, before that we definitely will do a lot of projects to to you know to to provide alternatives uh, other than vehicle driving so that uh, the parking demand is reduced. So it's just, just an idea listed in the in the, in the projects. Great. Um, Taylor, do you have anything else to add in terms of the the direction on on parking? No, just, yeah, parking is a tricky one. Um, we do, our, our most recent parking plans was the, the 2011 and then I believe 2019 uh, downtown parking uh, management plans. And it's really, it, it's another aspect of the transportation network. Um, and, and there's different ways to approach it to meet uh, different goals and different objectives. Um, so it's, it's certainly something that needs to be, we wanted to look at all, all at once holistically um, as part of this uh, TMP as well. Oh yeah, the, the other thing I'd like to add is that uh, regarding parking, um, we do see in balance parking demand in downtown area. So uh, the project that we propose to provide more parking supply is mainly on the outskirts of the, of the downtown area. It's not the, the, the core of the downtown area. And if I remember correctly, the the Second Avenue, uh, complete streets, would only have street parking during 
the uh, off peak times, right? Yeah, so Second Avenue would allow um, parking during off peak hours, yes. Brenda asked, "What is the purpose of the webinar and the open house?" Um, um, I think I think before that, uh, uh, Brenda is asking whether Eugene Eugene Street Eugene oh, Avenue, yeah. yeah, is designed to be the main arterial roads. Uh, no, the answer is no. Eugene Eugene Road Eugene Avenue is not is not designed to be the main arterial road. Just to add to that, Stanley. Yeah, Eugene is a is a local residential road, and uh, Witch Hazel just next to it is intended to be um, a more of a collector road. Thanks, Stanley. Thanks, Taylor, um, for clarifying that. Um, yeah, this this webinar we're, we're we're hearing your feedback on on some of the um, content of the transmission master plan that's been developed by the consulting team and through the engagement uh, in partnership and with, with the city. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're presenting those ideas and then hearing your feedback. Um, and it'll be similar at the open house um, and also the survey, um, at, you know, it, it's really showing, showing what's been, what's been created and, uh, and asking for your feedback and, and what your priorities are um, going forward. It's also a chance to sort of check in on, you know, are there things that are, are, are missing or things that, that, uh, that um, uh, you know, should be included in the, that final, what we heard um, around what you really like and what maybe doesn't work. Um, but really, yeah, it's about preferences and it's about sharing uh, the work that's been done. Um, thanks for your question. Can I just add to that a bit, Mateus? Yeah. And yeah, um, yeah and, and there's, there's an education component to this. And, and awareness and and also uh, yeah developing some awareness for the um, promoting the the open house which will be more opportunities to interact right we'll have we'll have some different tools at the open house to uh, to be able to collect input in different ways um, so we highly encourage uh, folks to come out to the the open house as well Thanks, Taylor. Um, we have uh, a last question from Richard. Um, widening of roads, uh, this is a con does not ease congestion. Uh, it creates induced demand. Um, and so uh, what is the purpose of adding lanes uh, in, in the transportation master plan is the question from Richard. Yeah, good question. Uh, and uh, we do fully acknowledge that. Um, um, but uh, there are competing demands uh, for the transportation master plan. Um, and uh, that's probably, we minimize the, the roadway expansion in the master plan. And that's probably on just one of them. Um, so yeah, we do acknowledge that. And uh, we do know that, uh, you know, adding adding more lanes to the roadway as does not necessarily solve the congestion problems. But we do have uh, many other uh, aspects to consider. Anything to add on that, uh, Taylor? Yeah, just, uh, just acknowledging that, um, yeah, we have our transportation demand management objectives that we're trying to uh, achieve and, and those really did um, those were really considered in our evaluation of potential options and uh, as Stanley mentioned you know um, at one point there was talk about widening Mountain View to four lanes and so we have taken a, an approach that's more uh, more a middle grounds type approach that isn't just uh, over expanding and um, and uh, potentially creating issues like like you mentioned there Richard so yeah, it's a it's balanced approach we feel, and uh, there's always trade offs with uh, with um, each potential project. But uh, we feel like we've we've considered those well in here, and uh, we can substantiate those fairly well as well. Awesome. 
Um, well, we are at the end of the hour here, so I want to respect everyone's time um, and uh, and uh, suggest that we we close the meeting here, uh, the webinar. Um, I appreciate everyone Sorry. for. Oh yeah, okay, can, I, can I just yeah. just uh, just to Brenda quick? Uh, we will yeah. we'll be in touch, Brenda, um, after the uh, after the meeting for sure, uh, in in the short short future, near future. Yeah, thanks, Taylor. Yeah, the the the, the team will, will will reach out, Brenda, and um, your your questions. All of them are um, documented here, um, and we'll make sure that those make it into the what we heard report, um, uh, as well as this presentation is recorded. So if you are talking to anyone who's missed it and wants to check it out, um, we'll post this and the slides uh, on the Engage Whitehorse uh, uh, page for for the Transportation Master Plan. Um, well, yes, and Richard, I see your last question about, uh, the, or comment about the price of, of building roads. And I'm, I'm sure that has been factored into the, the planning as well. Um, like Taylor was saying, four lanes to, to three, right? Um, it, the, the price is definitely a big part of that. But, yeah, um, uh, uh, sorry, I, I would encourage Richard to attend the uh, open house next week and uh, we can discuss further. Yeah. Yeah, Stanley will be here uh, up from Vancouver. Um, I'll be there. Um, and uh, yeah, look forward to keeping the conversation going. Uh, Stefan um, from the city will be there as well. And uh, Taylor, maybe you'll make an appearance as well. Maybe. You bet. Yeah. <laughs> right. Thank All you, right. everyone. Thank you, Thais, for uh, facilitating that. Stanley, thank you for uh, all your efforts participating uh participants thank you for uh for your time and uh and your questions and i uh, look forward as matea said uh continuing the conversation thank you everyone thanks everyone <laughs>